and we are live today we are talking yoga the mental health connection i have with me a uh, therapist jen how are you feel free to introduce yourself hey dp good to see you again um my name is jen baumgartner barnes as you can see um if you're on if you're on the youtube or facebook live otherwise uh to clubhouse people hey um i am a licensed clinical social worker um, having been working in the mental health field since the year 2000 and i started teaching yoga in 2009 um, i'm a experienced registered yoga teacher so i'm allowed to do continuing ed for yoga teachers um, which means i've been doing it a while <laughs> and i'm also a trauma center trauma sensitive yoga facilitator so um i i I'm excited to be able to share information about that. Uh, my connection to the military is uh, my grandpa, uh, Ralph Barnes, served in World War II in the South Pacific in the Navy. And my dad was a Vietnam era um, Air Force veteran. And my most recent partner, um, we're no longer, no longer together, but we were together 10 years. Uh, he is in the Air Force um, as a C-130 loadmaster. So it's, it's good to be here supporting veterans and sharing about a topic that's very near and dear to my heart. Awesome. Um, if you're seeing us uh, on Facebook or YouTube, you'll see the ticker on the bottom. We always ask, you know, let us know that you, that your branch of service and the years that you served. Uh, so we can go ahead and say, and say hello to you. Uh, if you're in Clubhouse, hello. We got Jay, uh, myself, and Jen in there as well. So we're going to be jumping uh, for a little after hour uh, session into Clubhouse, answering some questions and talking a little bit about yoga. So uh, we have some folks saying howdy. We got uh, Manuel saying hello uh, from Ohio, U.S. Army retired. Good seeing you again, brother. Appreciate you. Uh, you may you may know this person here, Ms. Lisa Wildman, saying hello from Colorado Springs. Um, <laughs> so. You got me standing up here. Uh, I got a mat on the floor. I got my service dog legend ready to teach me a thing or two. Uh, you put me at ease real quickly with telling me that we don't have to get too crazy with it. So I don't feel too bad that I can't hit um, a certain pose or what have you today. Uh, but I think that the topic is amazing and interesting because when we talk about yoga, most people just kind of think uber limber doing a lot of different things uh striking some pose trust me when we announced that we were doing this especially live the number one question i got was are you doing yoga and can we see you squirm um i think that might be of mental health relief to some but not necessarily <laughs> the topic that we're talking about but um but let's let's dive into it so you are also special you specialize in a, a certain type of modality for yoga and trauma and therapy let's just yeah. kind of unpack what is that connection because i'm sure many would have not heard that we've heard of hot yoga bikram yoga you know kundalini yoga all kinds of different modalities but there's a yoga connection with mental health that's new to some i'm sure let's unpack that yeah yeah well you know, DP, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned all those styles of yoga. Um, so just to real quick, um, you may or may not know, but yoga has been around for thousands of years. Um, the exact date of origin is unknown. Um, it was an oral tradition for a long time, um, but there are definitely scriptures that date back, like yogic texts that date back, I don't know, at least, at least a few thousand years, um, at least since uh, Patanjali wrote the Yoga Sutras um, in the right around ooh, 300 BC, I think, to 500 AD, they kind of estimate it. So yoga's been around a while. Um, but the yoga of ancient times is pretty different than what we do now. So <laughs> there wasn't really hot yoga, and there certainly weren't many pretzel twisting shapes to get into. Most of the postures back then were um, focused on how to sit for meditation. So um, the focus was all on breathing and meditation and stuff like that. Um, the postures that you see now are really um, have only evolved over the past 50 to 100 years. So all these different styles of yoga, hot yoga, um, anusara yoga, which is something that I'm in, I'm trained in, Iyengar yoga, um, they're all relatively new. Uh, so trauma center, trauma sensitive yoga, I'm certified in. I'm a facilitator. Uh, really, David Emerson came up with it in the early 2000s, probably came up with it in the late 90s actually, but we didn't start studying it till the early 2000s. 
And he, he decided to go the medical model route with it. So instead of making it, you know, super, um, hmm, what's the word I want? yoga e, <laughs> where we do like, you know, chanting and, and all the fun, you know, dare I say kumbaya stuff of yoga. Um, he really wanted to focus on helping people's mental health through yoga and specifically sought out to, pe uh, to help people with complex PTSD um, because it's a group that often can experience treatment resistance. And so um, his yoga is a bit different than what you might think of a, a typical yoga practice. Certainly we still all do the, the yoga forms um, or postures. Um, we shift our language though. We're very invitational in how we do things. There's nothing um, that you have to do. Everything's a choice. Um, and there's some other components as well, things that I'll talk, I'm sure I'll get to later, like interoception and all those kind of great things. Um, but it's pretty exciting being able to be a part of, of David Emerson's work, and which is now through the Center for Trauma and Embodiment. Um, hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Well, he, you had me at David, so there's that part. Um, if I'm, <laughs> if I'm, if I'm going to be real honest and clear with you. <laughs> You're both stand-up guys, actually, who, who know how to manage your power well. So I have a lot of respect, uh, respect for both of you. So. Yeah, and fun fact, I am standing, just in case I had to tr uh, st strike a tree pose. That's about okay, as much. Okay. Um, I came up okay. with my own pose, which was uh, lying, um, wounded squirrel. Um, that might okay. be a pose. <laughs> okay. There is actually a, a, a shape called um, flying squirrel in English. Uh, but we're, we're not going to do that because it's a hand balance. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm more of the after the squirrel lands uh, type of modality right now. Um, yeah. yeah. My my daughter, funny. Uh, she she does yoga in her elementary classes and is really limber. And obviously, legend knows downward dog pretty good. So that's that part. Um, but to the point of the trauma piece is interesting because I don't really think a lot of folks even would have equated one to the next, right? So one of the main questions that I'm sure many are asking is that sounds great, but how can I actually do set practices? How, what's the physical toll? Is it something that I can do, um, you know, with limited mobility, with disabilities or what have you. And we talked a little bit about like chair yoga and different things that people can do. Uh, but just to kind of frame it, I think it's interesting connecting the mind and body. Uh, I had a conversation with Maria who does amazing work with clay. And she does mental health therapy through arts and clay and using her hands and kind of getting outside of herself, which I think was cool. So looking at yoga, being able to, again, use your body, use your breath, concentration to begin the process of, of doing that. I guess one of the first questions I have, well, two questions. One, for the individuals that may be physically limited, uh, is that a problem for them? And then two, uh, what have you seen uh, so far, whether in your own practice or leading it or being associated with the organizations that do this, uh, what have you seen as, you know, some of the success stories, right? Honoring, obviously, their privacy, but just curious, like, have you seen and worked with different individuals or veterans or folks that have experienced trauma and have been able to benefit from the practice? Yeah, so I'll address your first question um, first. Those are great questions to ask. Um, the, the first one I would say is... Um, there are lots of um, people out there that teach uh, adaptive yoga. So like even um, yoga for people who might be in a wheelchair or something like that. Um, Matthew Sanford, uh, he had a mind body solution studio in Minnetonka, Minnesota. Mm -hmm. um, he's actually written a, a book about it. Um, he was in a car accident and in a wheelchair. So he's created this whole um, adaptive yoga kind of area. And so there's a lot of ways to adapt yoga for sure. Um, I would say probably the average trauma center, trauma sensitive yoga facilitator, um, so like me or others, um, probably the most adaptive we get is if we offer a seated practice. So some of us might offer a seated practice, um, and I, we certainly can try some of that a little later. Um, you don't have to be able to see the video to do it. Um, so that's okay if you're on Clubhouse and want to try. Um, but, you know, certainly, Currently, I teach a trauma center, trauma sensitive yoga class, and I do have some people with mobility issues. And so, um, when they do their intake assessment, they mention those. And 
Um, I usually just respond and say, okay, you know, tell me a little bit about this so I can understand so that when we are doing different um, shapes, I can offer some modifications or things they might try. Um, the, things that, hmm. the thing that I really like about trauma center, trauma sensitive yoga or um, TCTSY for short, which might be necessary to <laughs> abbreviate right now. Um, so the thing I really like about it is everything is a choice. So what the facilitator is offering is like an invitation to maybe try and move your body a certain way. So let's say you don't wanna, or your body doesn't move that way, then you just don't. Mm. <laughs> you know, you can choose something else, you can choose to stand there or sit there or whatever, um, but, but that is one of the nice things that makes TCTSY so adaptive. Um, as far as your other question, there's actually a, a lot of, uh, research that's been done, um, studies, including the first study with David Emerson. Um, he sought out Bessel van der Kolk, who is a world-renowned trauma um, guru, so to speak. Um, he's written, he's the one who wrote The Body Keeps the Score. And he, in fact, studied David Emerson's yoga. Um, so if you're curious about that, um, David's yoga study is in that book. Um, but he was able to show some really positive shifts that happen in the brain and the body through trauma center, trauma sensitive yoga or TCTSY. And so we actually know what those changes are. Um, if anyone likes to geek out on brain stuff, I'm happy to share about it, but I know sometimes that makes people gloss. So, um, but personally I can share, uh, when I was in Colorado Springs, I had a weekly trauma center, trauma sensitive yoga group. And the things I would hear from people, including veterans, some are veterans, some weren't, is they would say, oh my gosh, I've never felt calm in my body. Or, oh wow, I have a choice. I feel like I have a choice. Mm -hmm. um, or I feel so empowered. Um, and a lot of people were also noticing an ability to um, have greater awareness and be able to deal with their emotions because they could notice them coming up and be able to say like, oh, okay, this is what I need to deal with. Um, so it's really mm -hmm. qu quite interesting. Well, and I think that's one powerful point, uh, Jen, which is options, right? The reason yeah. to have these conversations is to look at options, especially when it comes to mental health. It's not a one-size-fits-all type of situation. Some individuals may find therapy helps. Some may find that psychopharmaceuticals help. Some find that maybe plant medicine may help. Uh, some may find other modalities may help. And I'm not, I, I've never been one to kind of go to extremes. I believe that someone's journey maybe takes them down the path of yoga. Maybe someone's uh, journey takes them down the CBD paths or the cannabis paths or the psychopharmaceutical path. Whatever it may be, the point is you have options. And I love the fact that what you mentioned was, I, did, I, knew, I didn't know I could do this or this becomes an option for me. And for some individuals, it's like these are things that are out there. Again, it might not be for everyone, but if you're in your journey and you're trying to find things to do, even if you've never had any experience in this space, it doesn't matter. It's literally just something new to try. It's something to investigate on um, and be able to at least kind of get some understanding of it. Um, again, I'm using the arts as a comparison because l what I found interesting about um, what Maria did that I, I spoke about was using her hands with clay and physically kind of removing yourself from your mind and focusing on what you're creating. And I think in, in the yoga practice side of the house, being able to get out of your brain, right, and kind of just follow the practice or have instructions and be able to use your body however use you have to be able to go down this journey, I think it's empowering for some who may feel like, Jen, I just, I'm not limber like I used to be. You don't get it. I'd love to do all the things you're saying, but I can't do those things, or I can't do that thing. And for someone that can find a way of saying, hey, even if you can, even if you can sit in a chair, that's something. Even if you can just use your hands or whatever the case may be, I, I think it just it's, it gives power back to a veteran or someone who's dealing with mental health conditions and physical limitations to be able to just embrace something new. So I really love that point of having something new for someone, right? Because I think that's what kind of keeps the spark of, to a degree, living. It's like everything I've tried hasn't worked, where now there's something new. And when it's something new, it brings excitement. 
it's a new practice, it's a new discovery, it's something that might be interesting to me, um, and it doesn't matter what the age is, young, old, in between, men, women, uh, can all benefit from something like this, so, um, yeah, so I, I just wanted to highlight that point, because I think it's just great to be able to touch on that. Uh, we have a few folks that have come up, uh, and we're actually going to jump to the web here in a second and, and show some things. Of course, ignore these comments. Someone's saying, we want to see DP uh, Yoga Gen. <laughs> <laughs> Someone wants to see uh, the DP um, you know, landed squirrel pose. <laughs> uh, we have some folks kind of tuning in here from Facebook and YouTube. Army, 1990 to 2011. Thank you for your service. We got Amy out there in Colorado, Air Force 20 to 2011. Uh, U.S. Navy is in the house, 86 to 96. Air Force Reserve from 96 to Thank 2015. Uh, we have you, Etta. Sir. Tucker, Air Force Reserve, retired, um, and in Marine Corps in the house, 2009 to 2013. Thank you all for being here. Um, some comments are being dropped in the comment section as well. If you're seeing this on a replay or not live, it's fine. We'll still be communicating with you all. Uh, but I think it would be a good point to just jump since we're dropping links uh, to show some of the places that folks can find the things you have. So first, this is Pathways to Wellness, LLC.com. Uh, this is where your practice is at. Um, a mm -hmm. few, what are some things you would like some folks to know or where they can find here? Like your blogs by far are gonna be great. So there's great stuff here to begin with. Yeah, so that's my um, main website for my business. Oh, look um, at this. You got my blog page up there, including the blog I wrote um, for how yoga can improve mental health, um, which is a bit heady. I tried to make it as simple as possible. Um, but wanted to make sure I, I could share why exactly and how it helps and all that good stuff. Um, but also on that website are the s different services I offer as a clinical social worker. Um, you know, certainly I take insurance. Um, I will say with COVID right now, uh, my, my schedule for individual work is pretty full, but I do have, um, you know, there's, he's pulling up some of my services there. So you'll see EMDR, internal family systems, the yoga, um, the safe and sound protocol, which is another really cool thing. Um, biofeedback and AccuDetox, which I can't do in Minnesota right now. So um, I'm only allowed to stick people with needles in Colorado. So, <laughs> 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 so anyway, uh, but you'll just find all the services that I have there. There's a way to get a hold of me. Um, if you want to be part of a mailing list that um, I send out about, well, about one email a week uh, that you'll learn just with helpful tips for your mental health um, at the bottom of the page. Um, there's a link and it will take you at the very bottom of the page. <laughs> there's a link. Oh, maybe not that page. Um, it's not showing up, so I'm not sure. Well, it might be in the small print. So anyway, yeah. um, there's a way to be able to um, go sign up for that on my other website, yeah. um, which is where I keep my, I house my trauma center, trauma sensitive yoga classes. And we're going so right there right now. So here it is on the yeah. bottom to receive tips, practices, and more on the main page. Click here and this will take you, I guess, right here to be able to. Uh, get more information as well on the yeah. very bottom. So that'll take us to the ability to sign in for the email opt-in. So the very first uh, step you get to will be, again, Pathways to Wellness, LLC.com. The very first page, if you go to the bottom, you'll see it says to receive tips, and you'll see it says click here. That'll take you to the email opt-in to receive the information. Uh, but again, I just wanted to highlight the blog you wrote, uh, the modalities, the services you offer are great. Uh, but for this specific conversation we're having, you wrote uh, Yoga Works, How Yoga Improves Mental Health, uh, which is, again, uh, a blog that you wrote specifically for the conversation we're having. Um, and just kind of reading off a few points here that folks are able to see on the screen if you're watching us, if you're hearing us, um, some mental health related tips increase uh increase in somatic and uh, kinesthetic awareness improve mood self-acceptance acceptance of emotion less judgment present moment awareness greater accept acceptance of life experiences improve results in psychotherapy and i really want to just to jump on that last one because it really benefits the point that this becomes an add-on to your mental health journey, uh, which well, I'm going to circle back here in a second, but I also wanted to jump to uh, your TCTSY website, which is pathwaysuniversitymn.com uh, backslash TCTSY. 
why. And here is the trauma center sensitive yoga and information about the practice specifically. What are some things you'd like to call out here for those that may want to visit? Yeah, uh, right now I have a, a weekly um, live class on Saturdays. Usually I do it in a monthly series. You can buy four classes at a time for the month. Um, it meets live um, on Zoom Saturdays at 1030 Central Time. Um, but then also you can have access to the recordings after. So the first step to do that, though, is to take a, a quick assessment just to make sure that it's clinically appropriate for you to engage in trauma center, trauma sensitive yoga, since it is an adjunctive treatment for trauma. Um, it's important that we make sure that, that uh, it, it's appropriate given where you're at in your treatment. So um, that's basically it. That page will share a lot about um, how, like, what we know about trauma sensitive yoga, how it works, the different components of it, like what makes it different, um, and all that kind of good stuff. So. Awesome. Um, so kind of jumping back to this conversation, uh, I'm really interested in improving results in psychotherapy, uh, specifically yeah. for those that are doing uh, their own therapy, and this can become an add-on. And for me, I look at this as what happened with me and my service dog. Uh, when I went through the process of getting a service dog, one of the things that I noticed was when I approached this, it was, hey, this is part of your overall mental health journey. So it's you're in therapy, but you're also looking into having these sessions with, you know, training, getting him ready um, as part of that therapy. So this is something also that can benefit that, correct? Yeah. So um, definitely TCTSY is an adjunctive treatment um, for, for psychotherapy. So we're able to use the yoga as a way to, um, you know, bolster therapy. And how it works actually is, you know, in order for psychotherapy to work, um, or really one of the first tasks of psychotherapy is to regulate the nervous system, right? To regulate your body. So, you know, if you read any research on trauma or any um, recommendations on how to treat it, the first phase in phase treatment is always stabilization. Um, and trauma center, trauma sensitive yoga, or really any kind of yoga can help you um, be able to stabilize. Uh, what we know from our studies is that the practice of yoga, um, especially TCTSY, but there's studies for other yoga as well, um, helps regulate our nervous system in a way that allows us to have better outcomes in therapy. Hmm. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, certainly also there's the added components of TCTSY that allow us to uh, connect with our higher self um, or our inside self. So rather than thinking outward, like with art, you're really tuning into something outside of yourself. This is a really tuning inward. So it okay. gives you that practice of being introspective in a safe space, um, which is what the facilitator holds. Hmm. Uh, one question that came up is, or a comment was, I'm trying to uh, get into yoga. Uh, what would you say for someone who may be trying to get into it? Uh, a follow-up question is, uh, what, is a, what is a good way for a true beginner to start um, in this practice? Yeah, so, um, you know, now with, with COVID and things being online, um, certainly you can find um, people that offer very basic practices online. Um, I guess some of it depends on your fitness level and your mobility. So if you're someone where you have really limited mobility or um, not a lot of fitness. I like the quiet your mind comment. I'll get to that. Um, <laughs> um, but, you know, then I would recommend starting some chair yoga. You know, certainly, I mean, not everyone on YouTube who offers yoga is fantastic. Um, but, you know, you can ask, certainly ask around, see if you know anyone who offers yoga. Um, that way, that would be an inexpensive way to just try out different styles. Um, certainly, you know, something you might even consider is, if you're wanting to get started in yoga, maybe reflect on what your intention is, like what you hope to get out of it. Um, because based on that, um, you may want to try one type of yoga or another. Mm. Um, like let's say you really, really want to sweat. You really, really just want to sweat it all out. Then you're going to be more likely to go to hot yoga. Um, if you're looking more at therapeutics, um, then you're going to want an alignment-based yoga like Anusara or Iyengar yoga. Um, if you're wanting to flow and move um, and not have much stillness, um, then, then you're going to be looking at something that's more vinyasa style or ashtanga based. 
Um, although I will say, if you go to an Ashtanga yoga class, um, I would not go there as a beginner because it's a very intense practice. Um, <laughs> but but you might try. <laughs> it's a very very. There's a certain series they follow, and it's very intense. Um, but you know, if you're a beginner, if you have like a gym membership, sometimes the best place to just go try it out before you invest a lot of money is to to like go to your gym. Um, if you're a member of a gym uh, and they have online classes, you can try that. Um, certainly, you know, <clears throat> I'm posting a YouTube video here this weekend of a sample of trauma center, trauma sensitive yoga. So you can see if you like that. Um, that would be a way to know if you're interested in trying something with me. Um, but I would get really clear on what it is that you're hope, hoping to get out of it because there's lots and lots of different styles of yoga. And I would say that it's okay to ask questions about like, what does this specific kind of yoga focus on? Like, what do I get out of it? Um, you know, because, because you want to make sure that the answer lines up with what you're looking for. I think that's a good point that you kind of raise, which is the intention part. Um, that's been kind of the topic of a lot of the conversations uh, that we've been having, uh, both here in you know our live sessions as well in Clubhouse, right? What is the intention that I'm moving with, right? When it comes to my outlook, my mindset, the things that I want to do, what is it that I'm trying to accomplish with this practice? And I think that intention uh, applies to many things. You, I, we've heard a lot about it when it comes like plant medicine. What's the intention that you want? Some uh, modalities might be for clarity. Some might be for healing. Some might be to work through things you're going through. Again, there's a variety of ways, but the common theme is intention. Um, and I love that you mentioned that because for some, it's like, what's the intention you're coming into this with? Uh, going back to the same uh, question that came up, which is quieting the mind. Um, you know, what would you have to that? Again, that going into this, like, okay, that might just be part of my intention in all this is for me to find stillness and just center myself because I cannot quiet my mind, right? So maybe my intention is more psychological uh, in nature than physical. Like, so there's, so there's a variety of ways to look at this, right? There's a benefit to the mental health piece, uh, but specifically to this, let's just, let, let's just dissect this. It's hard for me yeah. to quiet my mind. A lot of veterans or folks that are dealing with mental health conditions, PTSD and so forth, that's a common issue, common theme, common thing that we deal with. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? So I actually have a two-part answer to that. Um, part one, the the kind of slicker answer, um, is you know, if you're wanting to practice yoga, and you're looking for a style of yoga that might um, <clears throat> make it a little easier to quiet your mind, um, then I would I would consider something that flows more. So you're looking for like a vinyasa flow type class, or something with the word flow in it. Um, where the poses aren't, or the forms aren't held very long, um, you know, something with more movement. Um, of course, again, depending on your physical fitness level, your ability level, um, you know, and, and, and certainly one thing I do want to say, kind of stepping back a little bit, um, you know, you made the comment about, oh, I'm not flexible enough for yoga. You know, one of the things that, uh, I don't know if anyone still says this, but we used to joke about a few years ago is, you know, saying you're you're not flexible enough for yoga is like saying you're you're too hungry to eat Thanksgiving dinner, or <laughs> or you're too dirty to take a bath. You know, because like <laughs> those are things that you can get from the practice. Certainly, um, you know, you don't have to, but I do find that comes pretty naturally for most people. Um, but but definitely, you know, paying attention to what style of yoga. I think the ones that are very movement and flowy tend to pull us out of our mind more. So sometimes that can be what people really prefer. Um, what I would also say is, um, and this may not be people's favorite to hear, um, but, but maybe to work on letting go of needing to quiet the mind. And instead, like leaning into that mm. and saying, oh, wow, my mind is super busy right now. Yeah, look at it go. It is, wow, hardcore. It is thinking. And, and just say, yeah, I hear you. I hear you. You know, like, um, you know, in some of those thoughts, certainly if they're like trauma memories coming up and flashing that, you know, flooding you, that's a different thing. But if you're, th you know, if you're stressed about, I don't know why this came up for me, but if you're going to, you have a birthday party tomorrow and you're going to bring donuts and you're stressed about how you're going to get the donuts because it's 35 below here. Um, 
<laughs> you know, outside temperature, <laughs> you know, so I mean, you know, you might be thinking about the donuts, or you might be thinking about, uh, you know, work on Monday or whatever. That's the kind of stuff that you can lean into, you know, certainly if you're having trauma memories, that's something I would recommend talking to a therapist about um, more one to one. But if it's more just kind of that racing thoughts, sometimes leaning into it and saying, you know, it's okay, I can just let those thoughts go on in the background. Um, I would actually say the probably the number one reason I hear for people not trying meditation or yoga is they're upset or afraid that they can't quiet their mind. And mm. truth be told, that's not the point. Um, the point is just to be present and learn to be present and hold the space for what's coming up. And then within that, your mind does tend to quiet. But it's like if you try and force your mind to be quiet, it turns out it gets louder. Mm. And, and yeah. it's, it's like a resistance piece. So I, I'll say that, um, you know, just in mindfulness and different things that I've tried um, over, you know, the years, specifically, I, I find it interesting. So, you know, for the collective, um, you know, I've practiced yoga and I've, I've, I was into the arts and I've done dance and different things and theater uh, back when I was a little more limber. But what I can always remember that's interesting is in mindfulness, for me at least, in therapy and things, it's understanding that I may have a lot of things happening right now, but I'm just going to let it be. I'm not going to yeah. fight it because that resistance of fighting the thoughts sometimes makes it much more louder versus trying to yep. center myself. And there's a lot of you know guided practices and so forth, but just bringing my breath and my attention and my focus to my hands. What am I feeling? Right, I'm standing right now. Right, my feet are on a pad. What does that pad feel like? That's where my mind is going. Um, and I would offer that. And, and I'm, I'm, my question to you uh, as a follow-up for those folks is, even taking mindfulness to another level, um, I, I would assume as you're practicing and you're looking at different ways to be able to use yoga as part of this uh, mindfulness and this journey, it's also unlocking things, right? You can get, we can get really deep into it. We can start talking chakras now. We can start talking meridians. We can start talking energy. And when we're starting to look at how we are actually navigating this space, really the physical movements are complementary to what's happening in the mindful side. So I guess that's a one question for the audience that I would ask you, Jen, which is when people look at mindfulness and meditation, they're sitting and they're still and they're focusing on the breath and they're maybe following um, a, uh, a guided you know, meditation. Whereas in the yoga side of the house, there is guided movement, but you're physically doing something which is to a degree opening up those energy fields, the chakras, and you're tapping into more than just a mindfulness aspect. So can you elaborate a little bit on the the, the amplification of that journey by adding physical movement, which is what the yoga gives you the ability to do. Yeah, um, certainly. I mean, the yoga, you know, yoga asana practice is what you're referring to. And just to kind of clarify for a moment, um, you know, more traditionally when we talk about yoga, and a lot of people in the West may, may not realize this, so I just want to make a distinction. Um, more traditionally when we talk about yoga, we talk about like the eight limbs, we talk about there being, you know, breath work, um, yoga asana, which is the physical postures that most people think of um, when they think of yoga. It's hatha yoga, um, H-A-T-H-A, -H -A, hatha. Um, and, and that's what most people think about. But, but there's the breath work, there's the yoga asana, there's meditation. Actually, when you look at the eight-limbed path of yoga, which is just one kind of yoga, um, the last four limbs of the eight limbs are all dedicated to meditation. Um, so, so much of, of traditional yoga is this big picture. But in terms of the, you know, yoga asana, uh, I mean, it's a little hard to separate out, but, but certainly, um, you know, we do have the chakra system and the chakras are, um, we have seven main ones that go up and down the um, central channel of the spine called the Shashumna Nadi. Uh, you don't have to remember that. <laughs> but, but the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but those are basically energy centers, wheels of light um, that go up and down the spine that certainly there's different forms and shapes um, depending on the kind of energy of, of the, the yoga pose that you're doing. Um, it can open up some of that. Like if you're doing more grounding um, things like some of the standing poses like, you know, trikonasana, triangle pose or something like that would be more grounding. So that's more likely to 
you know, um, foster a sense of balance in the root chakra. Whereas if you're doing like boat pose, which is um, you're like this on the floor, these are your legs, these are, this is your torso. Oh, this is so weird because I'm, my hand isn't mirrored, but okay. Anyway, um, hopefully you got the picture on that one. Um, that certainly you'll feel it in your, in your abdominals, and that's more of a, a solar plexus, um, the Manipura chakra. Um, and, and that's more about uh, inner empowerment kind of stuff, right? Or like heart openers. Definitely, um, those are the things that a lot of people, especially with trauma, can get stuck um, or hung up on because um, if you think about back bends, um, now, bridge poses, like for example, you know, if you haven't done yoga, don't worry about it. But there's things where you're opening your heart up and you're bending backwards, whether you're lying on the ground or um, standing, that actually open up your heart chakra, and that can be very vulnerable. Hmm. So sometimes for trauma survivors, you know, like in my TCTSY, for example, I'm really mindful about which heart openers I offer, um, hmm. knowing that. Um, but yeah, there's there's a whole energy system that gets. Um, open up with yoga asana and and hopefully you know part of the intention is that we're balancing the energy system um, you know we want the chakras to be in balance um, versus one being dominant or or whatever and and the asanas are one piece of the puzzle that can help that certainly breath work can help and certainly meditation so. can you talk a little bit about grace in going through this and I, I mean that because uh, a few comments have come up uh, that I want to highlight. Uh, let's see here. Um, really, uh, we talked a little bit about the mobility piece. One of the comments came up. Um, I'm really hesitant to try yoga because of limited mobility and fitness due to illness. Is there a way for me to participate in trauma-sensitive yoga if I'm limited? Um, I think we're unpacking some of that as we're going through. Um, someone also commented and said, I'm looking into therapeutics. Uh, someone else said, I do not have a gym membership, but I will try the links to the yoga that you teach to be able to follow along uh, yeah. as well. Um, someone said, yes, uh, I, how do I quiet the mind even when it's in the loudest of places? Again, these are some of the comments before we started to, to kind of unpack this here. Um, uh, someone else commented, "This is a good. that's a good point. Let it be. Um, I'm learning about chakras now. Um, Let's see, is it a good idea to start off doing yoga for a few minutes a day and then building up in duration and time? Um, so I'll let you answer these, but I guess my question for those is, for some, this may open up um, pathways, right? Pun intended, right? Pathway, pathways to wellness, um, your practice. But it may open up pathways that a lot of folks that have things bottled up, especially from a trauma perspective, that may come out. Can you talk a little bit about having, I guess, mercy and grace, rather, with yourself as you may experience these things? Granted, we want you to be in therapy. We want you to have a therapist. All these things are things to add on, which we talked about. It doesn't replace therapy. It's, it's, it's an additional piece there. But for someone that may feel like, Jen, this is opening up things, is emotionally is, is putting me in a place. Like you talked about if you're, you know, certain positions that you're holding and you're opening yourself up and you're doing, a, let's say, a salutation or what have you. For some, that may open up a pathway where emotions and feelings may come. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? Because I think for some, it might be like, well, if I do this, this will heal me and I won't feel things. And that's not necessarily the case. Right. Right. So actually what I would say about yoga is it's not that you won't feel. You'll actually feel more. However, you'll have greater abilities. You'll have greater um, personal power in how you deal with those things that come up. So, so part of what we know about yoga is, is it actually, like I said, it calms the autonomic nervous system, but it also impacts the parts of the brain that have to do with sensory perception. So it, it changes how we take in stimuli um, and, and you know, definitely in really positive ways so that we're more accurately perceiving our environment. Um, that's one piece of how we're, we're able to handle the new information that we might have. Um, another piece of it is, you know, yoga, especially trauma-sensitive yoga, trauma center, trauma-sensitive yoga um, impacts the, the insula or the insular cortex, which has to do with um, some of it is what I just said, but some of it is actually a perception of self, like who I am. And by having that, we're better able to then um, kind of lead from that place of our highest self. 
so so let me you know the word yoga um, comes from the the root the Sanskrit root yuj which means to unite and what we're really trying to do with yoga is create a union between ourselves and universal consciousness or for some a higher power for some they might use the God word like not everyone's comfortable with that I know so I, I say it carefully um, you know and for some who don't believe in that they might just be connecting with the deepest levels of themselves as you do that yes you will have stuff come up but you will also have a calmer nervous system through yoga and a greater ability to handle that stuff com that comes up um, the other piece I would say about that that's really important is when we um, when we practice trauma center trauma sensitive yoga um, that specific style of yoga and and this isn't to say other kinds of yoga aren't good it's just if you're a trauma survivor and you're noticing yourself getting triggered in a regular yoga class there's some things that we do differently that are specific to trauma survivors um, so for example the invitational language is really important so when I'm teaching a regular yoga class we use what's called command language so command language would be DP raise your left arm up to the sky okay now and you go ahead and lower it so that's command language right invitational language which is what we use in the trauma center trauma sensitive yoga is if you'd like you're welcome to raise your left arm up towards the sky mm. if, if you've raised your left arm up so you could stay here another option could be to lean to the side so you might stay up upright or you might have leaned to the side so you have a choice and if you've leaned to the side, you might come back to center and, and perhaps if your arm is lifted, you might lower it, right? And so the language is gentler as a way to, you know, first of all, give you the power of choice. And so what we found is, is that helps trauma survivors have a greater sense of agency. That's what the data shows from, from Van der Kolk's study. Um, and what a sense of agency is, is this ability to make choices for themselves and feel empowered. Um, including in the yoga class, right? Mm -hmm. Like if it's like, whoa, too much, too much. I'm not doing that. Then they can choose that, right? So, so it's not um, a, so it's not a place where you feel like, oh, I can't keep up, and and that's the yeah. reason why I brought up uh, the website specifically uh, that I brought up on the screen here, which talks about the trauma sensitive yoga. Is this class for me? And I, I just love this little script, this paragraph here that specifically says, if you've ever felt empty disconnectedness or a sense of hopelessness in relationship to your body you are not alone and it doesn't mean anything is wrong with you these feelings may be due to the impact of past trauma that has had on your body as a result these traumatic events the parts that connect your brain to your body may have been disrupted and then it kind of goes on to the benefits of the practice here so i think it's 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 something really noteworthy to bring up because some folks, like I tell you, I've been to like a, you know, a hot yoga and it's one of those things of like, boy, I can't keep up with this thing. This is ridiculous. So I'm just trying to stay alive at this point versus this is more of a, because it's trauma sensitive, hence the, the title, um, it's allowing me to go where I feel comfortable. And I, and I think I really appreciate it. You say going like breaking up the invitational to the command language because if we go to like i want to get fit and i want to burn fat i want to do all these different things well it's a it's a boot camp type of thing right it's, it's a command language we're going to hit this pose now hold this move here versus now i'm being invited into a practice to do something that maybe if i don't feel comfortable anymore i can go ahead and retreat and it's okay because i'm in control here and for trauma survivors uh, whether it be PTSD, whether it be uh, sexual assault, whatever the nature of the trauma may be, um, takes power away from you. And here yeah. in this practice, it's regaining power. And I think that's Absolutely. a great point to bring up for someone who may have experienced um, trauma and felt hopelessness, felt helpless. Like you don't understand, Jen, because of this event, I never felt so helpless in my life. I will never feel that way again. And I want no parts of something I cannot control. And you see that with people who've experienced trauma who go to extremes to control everything. I will master my body. I'm going to build it up. I'm going to do all the things so I am in total control. I want no parts of this yoga thing because I am not in control and I don't want it. So, you know, so those are natural responses at times to things like this. So I think really explaining the invitational aspect of what the practice does, um, I think it's really powerful for someone to know that 
I'm being invited to practice. I'm being invited to go through movement, even the arm piece, right? Maybe I have limitation, but maybe I'm, I'm being invited to what I can and cannot do. I can go within my range of comfort and I don't feel less than because I'm not doing something you're doing. Absolutely. And, you know, one thing that I'll say that is, is interesting, um, perhaps not shocking when we pause to reflect on it, is that um, a lot of trauma survivors, um, especially people with complex trauma who had that early life trauma, um, but even just, you know, general uh, trauma as well, one of the things that we notice is um, it takes a while for them to exercise their choice. Mm. Um, because they're there's this sense of, oh, I don't want to do it wrong, or I don't want to be in trouble, I don't want to stand out. And, um, and so sometimes it even takes a little while. Like I've had conversations with people, like it, they can be, you know, they can say, oh, geez, the first time I, <laughs> the first time I, I chose to do something different than you, I, I was worried about what was going to happen, and then I found out it was okay. Mm. Um, and then I felt more empowered to do it more, you know, that, that not only was it okay, but like, like, like for me to try, but you didn't even like bat an eye at it, mm. you know? And so it, it, it also retrains the brain around like, oh yeah, I can make a choice and, and that's okay. Like I get to make those decisions um, because decision-making is something that we notice is, is hard sometimes for people who had a lot of trauma. Mm. Um, the, the other thing I'll say that we do in trauma center, trauma sensitive yoga, that's a, um, perhaps different than most traditional, or not traditional yoga, but uh, Western yoga. Um, if you went to a non-trauma sensitive class, which is fine, I teach those too. Um, but, but if you were to go to one of those, um, you'll see a lot of hands-on assists. Um, the teacher will come and to help you either, you know, get into the pose if you're having a hard time, or to maybe feel it more deeply, or um, you know, help you if your alignment is off. Um, you may find teachers who who will who will put their hands on you. And in some classes, teachers ask. In some classes, unfortunately, they don't. Um, and one of the big things that we found out very very early on, Dave found out in trauma center trauma sensitive yoga, was that you know he he was a yoga teacher. He was like, oh yeah, hands on assists are so healing. They're so great. But what the trauma um, survivors that were taking his very early classes in the early times of TCTSY, they were like, Dave, you tell me I have a choice, but then you put your hands on my body and move it as though I don't have a choice or I'm doing it wrong. And so in, in TCTSY, we know, you know, now for, oh my gosh, well over a decade, um, we, we don't touch people in yoga. In fact, we stay on our mat, so we're predictable. Um, we create a sense of safety, but it also empowers you to know that I'm not going to come into your personal space and tell you what to do. You're, you're in charge of your own body. Um, and, you know, I, you know, I have my opinions on assists even in general classes now. I'm, not, I'm generally not a fan unless you have a really strong relationship between a teacher and a student where there's a, a sense of trust there. Um, but, you know, one of, the, one of the things that we really focus on in TCTSY is like, not putting our hands on people because we want you to feel empowered and not like we're, you know, taking you over. <laughs> no, and that's and that's great. Um, yeah, that's, that's I think it's answering a lot of the questions that are coming up. Um, for the one question as far as the ramp up, um, what what's your thoughts on this one? I'm so glad you brought that back because I was trying to remember all of the questions and I knew there was one I wanted to come back to and that was it. So thank you. Um, I think that's a fantastic idea. In fact, that's how um, I even recommend doing it. So I've been trying for years to have a regular yoga practice. And when I've been successful at it, you know, it waxes and wanes. Um, but when I've been successful at it, I even like I'll in my therapy practice, I'll tell people to set a better than nothing goal. And this is true of any behavior change. So my better than nothing goal for yoga is five minutes a day. No matter what, I can get five minutes a day of yoga. I, I can. I absolutely can. Um, for some people, it might be one, one pose. You know, it might be one downward facing dog or one, one turn of the head one way, breathe. One turn of the head center, breathe. One turn the other way, breathe. One back to center, breathe. I mean, slower than that. And that's it, right? But, but come up with your, your better than nothing goal that you're going to be able to do every day. And then maybe you have like what you'd like to get to every day and maybe do that. You know, so my goal right now is 10 minutes a day with my better than nothing goal being five. 
So if I go longer than 10, I'm like, oh, that's nice. Um, but I try not to go a full, like, you know, like hour and a half because then it feels like it was too much and it interrupted my day. And don't get me wrong. I love yoga and, and it, it is more of a blessing than an interruption. But at the same time, it, it does take time, you know? So I would recommend coming up with a better than nothing goal to do every day and then build up from there. Um, but don't add a lot more time until you feel solid and consistent in something. So once I feel solid in my 10 minutes a day, which might take me six months, then I'll move up to 15 minutes or 20 minutes and, and go from there. Awesome. Um, let's see. Someone commented, I'm looking for additional things that I can do to help myself. Uh, another comment that came in, you've encouraged me to try yoga again, knowing what output I want before I start. And I think really that's the power of just at least having the intention of trying, knowing what you're going into uh, and what to expect coming out of it. Um, one good point that Lisa brought up here that I think is worth talking about, we can find our classes in Veterans Network Club in Clubhouse. Okay. One of the things that we're going to do uh, for those in Clubhouse that are listening is also holding space in room to where you can just listen uh, to a practice and just hold space to be able to go through these uh, modalities and different things that are available. So you could, you could share a little bit about kind of some of the things that we talked about there. But for those that are in Clubhouse, uh, that's something that we're going to be holding rooms in the Veteran Network Club, uh, specifically with Jen leading uh, and holding space. Yeah, and I'm I, I'm really excited. I'm just going to start with 15 minutes on Tuesdays uh, at noon Central Standard Time in Clubhouse um, through through the Veterans Network on on Clubhouse. Um, I'm, I'm I'm excited to do it because 15 minutes. I think you know it's right around lunchtime for well, it depends, I guess, what time zone you're in. Uh, <laughs> you know, but it might be the end of lunch for people on the East Coast. It might be heading into lunch for the, mm -hmm. the people in the mountain time, central time, it might be in the middle, I don't know. But um, just 15 minute break to just, you know, tune into your body, opportunities to tune in your body. Um, I'm excited to offer, I'll probably offer a, a seated practice those days, um, just entirely, you know, chair-based yoga, um, just because I don't know what everybody's, um, you know, ab abilities are. I don't know um, how, how people are able to move their bodies. and. And without having prior conversations, you know, um, I don't want to do a lot of wild and crazy stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, we yeah. got Mark saying he loves yoga. Lisa is excited. Hey. Um, and I think as, we, as we're coming to wrap up, we have about another five minutes before we wrap. Uh, I think this is really more information educational. Um, but I think we talked a little bit about this. We could kind of start ending and off and just kind of go through. Well, I'll let you kind of take the reins here. Uh, so we're both in a chair. Because uh, I don't want to disappoint. Someone's like, I tuned in and I saw no yoga from UDP. I didn't see downward dying, dying squirrel. So <laughs> um, we could uh, kind of close out and just kind of let you lead. Uh, for those that are in Clubhouse listening, you can follow along as well. Um, I'll let Jen kind of take it from here. Yeah, so you don't need to be able to see. So if you're in Clubhouse, that's all right. Um, if you choose to see, you can. If you don't want to look at us, then you can tilt your screen up. Um, so if you'd like, you might, you might find a seat. You could maybe be seated in a chair or you might choose to sit on the floor. And, and maybe if you're seated, you might lengthen your spine. So you might be lengthening your spine. And perhaps if you're lengthening your spine, you might notice your breath. I just noticed I was holding my breath. So if you notice that, you one option might be to invite the breath back in. And maybe turning your head to one side. So if you'd like, you might turn your head to one side, maybe turning it part of the way, or perhaps turning it as far as you can. You have a choice. And if you've turned your head to one side, you might bring it back to center and perhaps switching sides. So you might turn your head to one side, maybe turning it part of the way, or maybe turning it as far as you can. You're in charge. And if your head is turned to the side, you might 
return back to center and perhaps moving your shoulders. So one way to move your shoulders might be to roll them, maybe rolling them forward or maybe rolling them back. Maybe noticing the breath. And if you've been moving your shoulders, you can release them back to center. And perhaps reaching one arm up. So you might lift one arm up to the sky and maybe staying here. So you might have one arm lifted to the sky and perhaps staying there, or you might lean to the side. So you might be leaning to one side, maybe placing your bottom arm on your leg, or if you're sitting on a chair or couch, maybe on that piece of furniture. Perhaps noticing some sensation in the side of your body. You might notice it somewhere else. You might not notice any sensation at all. And if you're leaning to the side, you might lift back up to center. And if your arm is lifted, you might lower your arm. And you're welcome to switch sides. So you could reach your other arm up. So you might have one arm lifted and maybe staying here. Another option could be to lean to the other side. So you might be leaning to one side, perhaps noticing the breath. And if you're leaning to one side, you might lift back up to center. And perhaps turning your body to one side. So you might turn your body to one side, maybe placing your opposite arm on the leg that you're turning towards. So you might be turning to one side, maybe noticing some sensation in your back as you turn. You might notice it somewhere else. Or maybe not at all. And if you're turning to one side, you could come back to center and perhaps switching sides. So you might turn to the other way. So maybe turning to one side, perhaps with your opposite arm on the leg that you're turning towards. Maybe noticing some sensation across your back. You might notice it somewhere else or maybe not at all. And if you're turned to one side, you might come back to center and perhaps folding forward. So one way to fold forward might be to lean forward, placing your forearms on your legs. So you might have your feet flat on the floor and you could place your forearms on your legs. Another option might be to fold so that your hands touch the floor. So you might reach down so that your hands touch the floor. Maybe noticing the breath. As you notice your breath, one option is to take your feet a little farther apart, maybe your knees a little farther apart to make room for your breathing. And if you're folded forward, you might lift back up to center. And perhaps pausing here, you might take a moment, maybe noticing your breath. Maybe noticing movement in your belly or chest as you breathe. Or maybe noticing something else. Or maybe nothing at all. Thank you for letting me guide your practice. Peace. <laughs> that was amazing. Thank you, Jen. Um, <laughs> and that's a, a quick sample of just a quick practice right where you're at, whether you're listening or seeing us on your chair. Um, you know, I went as, as I went as far as I could go. Um, wherever I was not able to move into, I just kind of went as far as I could. And one thing I think I really appreciated as you were guiding us through this 
was your point to focus on the fact that you may feel something and if you don't it's okay because you know it's like jen i'm supposed to be in this moment i'm supposed to feel these things and the fact is maybe you don't and it's not there yet and that's okay um so i really appreciate just even that small piece that for someone could be like am i supposed to be feeling something am i doing it wrong if i don't feel something and it's like it doesn't matter if you feel something if you don't feel something the point is we're doing something and i think that by far is the greatest uh, benefit of this uh, i'm excited for hosting and having these rooms uh that you're going to be leading for our people um to be able to practice and try something new I'm so excited that the one thing you commented on is the one thing that we didn't get to talk a lot about, was, which is introspection. Um, introspection is that ability to possibly notice where you feel something in your body. And, and that ability actually opens up so much healing, especially for trauma survivors. Um, it creates that ability to reconnect with our body and understand our, our body sensations and our um, our emotions and it actually helps us live in the present um, because as you know Bessel van der Kolk says in his book the body keeps the score um, trauma is you know PTSD is a disorder of of not being able to live in the present yes and and you know what we found in you know through his study and then subsequent studies is that interoception is the thing that helps us be able to do that again so I love that you were able to uh, to pull that in that's great dp thanks awesome um jen as usual as always um i appreciate you uh holding space with us being able to come here um and have this moment holding this space uh some one of the last comments that came in was this is pretty cool this is the comments i've been all day it made me uh be present thank you jen um and i think that's really you know what this is about it doesn't have to be something too far out or crazy the point is it's a practice it's something that's evolving it's something that you're continuing and even just understanding that this is where i'm at today this is our this is my range of motion these are the things that i can do but i i was in a chair and i was able to do a few different things and just listen and just calm myself to what was happening and all the noise on my side goes away for that few minutes right i'm not thinking of the camera i'm not thinking of who's watching i'm not thinking of the clubhouse room all the things that we're managing to put this stuff together right. it just kind of goes away for a second and it's just we're here and i think yeah. there's something powerful about that so i just wanted to thank you for holding that space with us um of and those course. that are be are watching this thank you all for tuning in there's more to follow on this this will be a continuing series um we'll record a few of these short sessions just kind of going through um some practices just to be able to kind of just let you have the ability to watch this on your own to give you the ability to see okay different types of things right jen went a little bit further i kind of didn't go but you saw we were still able to hold this space so um I i'm really thankful for this moment i'm so glad thanks for having me dp it's always a pleasure to meet with you and be better than nothing goal <laughs> yes Yes, it's actually, uh, I love that you're going to use it for more than yoga. It's actually a great behavior change strategy. So Yes, yeah. definitely. <laughs> um, on that note, we appreciate all of you. We're going to jump and do a few minutes of, of some Q&A on the clubhouse side of the house. But again, we'll be back again for more of yoga, the mental health connection. And we'll do some more of what we did at the end for the next one, which I think will be very beneficial for many. So thank you again, Jen. More to Thanks. follow. Hope to see you Tuesday. See you guys Tuesday. <laughs> Bye.